Hey there, my name is Alexis, and I'm making a prototype for a dust collection cover that I'll eventually make out of plywood, but for this video, I'm making it out of cardboard. So I start off with figuring out the side profile, and when doing so, I made sure the battery was installed to account for the space that that occupies, as well as the amount of space my hand will occupy when using the handle. I then cut that cardboard piece to a much more manageable size and then I repeat the same for another piece of cardboard so that I can repeat the cut for the other side of the cover. And just to create an exact same size piece, I use these dollar clamps to hold it together while I make the cut on both pieces at the same time. I then use those same clamps to keep the side profile standing while I measure the width for the back panel and also take into account when the miter saw is at a 45 degree angle as the back panel would have to be a little bit wider to account for that. Once I figure out the width, I then measure the height for the lower part of the back panel because the back panel is going to be made up of two separate pieces. So I just make my measurements, make the cut, and then to hold it together, I tried two different methods and this one worked best. And it was basically to have the walls in the folded position and to hold both pieces together, I apply a few layers of packing tape. But if I was to do this again and this cardboard cover was a more long-term solution for me. I would have definitely have used duct tape, but I didn't at the time because I couldn't find it. But I did eventually test it out and I would definitely recommend using duct tape instead of packing tape if you were to use this cardboard cover as your main form of dust collection. I just did one layer of duct tape on both sides and it was pretty strong. It took a lot of effort just to pull them apart but if you were to recreate this i 100 percent recommend duct tape over packing tape especially dollar store quality packing tape one thing i didn't take into account when taping these pieces together is there will be a bit of a gap between the two cardboard pieces by maybe an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch so you may have to trim a bit of the material off after it's taped up like i did here it was only by about a quarter of an inch, but it was pretty quick to trim off. But just to keep that in mind that you may have to trim some material off. And then I just repeat the same process for the top part. And then basically my miter saw was fully covered from the back. And then the last component is just to make the front part of the cover, which is just a small section. And that's just basically whatever space the miter saw isn't in conflict with whenever it's being used. And the only difference here is it's going to be in an L shape. So I just had to take a few extra measurements and also make sure that it takes into account when it's rotated for angled cuts. Since it would take a little bit more space because of the blade guard. Then once you get the sizing, you can attach it. I attached it to the side because... If it's in the folding position, it won't be in the way of anything and it won't take up additional space. Now the main pieces are finally put together. All that's left is to make sure it doesn't collapse on itself. And to achieve that, I'm using magnets to keep it all together. And to do so, I'm gonna cut an opening inside the actual cardboard to insert the magnet. So I taped an additional piece of cardboard to the front part of the cover to act as a locking mechanism where one magnet will be taped onto the roof of the cover and then the other magnet will be taped onto that flap and uh, those two magnets basically hold each other together. And while making this, it got me thinking of how this would work for the plywood version and it would work, but I figured out a better alternative while doing this, which I'll briefly describe at the end of the video. But for now, I repeat the same process for the other side, but instead of the front panel connecting to the top panel, it's gonna be the side panel this time because there is no front panel on the other side and the flap was attached to the top panel. Although you could put it on the side panel if you want. I just chose to put it there. And I was surprised with how strong the magnets were in this case. I thought I was going to have to put another set. But I was moving it around with a bit of force. And it wasn't budging at all. So I would say this is very sturdy. So I just wanted to do one more test fit before I continue. And there was a bolt on the side of the miter saw that was sticking out a little bit. So I just had to cut a little notch on the side. I could have gotten away with not doing that probably. But... As you can see here, you can kind of notice how much the bolt sticks out a bit, but I could just address that by making the cover a tiny bit wider next time. And last is to cut an opening for the hose. And I made sure the opening was a little bit smaller than the actual outer diameter of the hose, just so that it's not gonna fall out when I'm using it. And that's about it. So next is to actually just show you how well it contains the sawdust. And you could hypothetically do this without a vacuum, 
it will contain the heavier sawdust pieces within the cover area so it won't spread all over your table but what's also important that you should consider is the finer sawdust particles that floats everywhere despite having a cover on your miter saw. If you notice in this clip, there's a lot of fine sawdust particles just floating inside the cover in front of the miter saw. If you look at the light, you can see it just floating throughout the whole garage. So I definitely recommend using a shop vac if you're gonna do something like this indoors, or at least wear a good mask or face covering or respirator. And I'm using a rigid shop vac. It has four gallon capacity and five peak horsepower. And I got it at a discount during the holiday season. So it was really good buy for the quality. And you can tell how good it is just by comparing the two clips of me cutting this plywood, one without the vacuum on and one with it on. And you can see how much it collects the sawdust. You barely see it floating in the air. Like I'm not saying it's collecting all of it, but I would say a significant amount, definitely. So this cover works really well in terms of containing the sawdust within that immediate area, especially when you have a vacuum connected to it. I did another test just by collecting some sawdust in my hand and then just dropping it near the entrance of the cover just to show you how much of the vacuum is working in terms of bringing in that sawdust away from me and towards the vacuum hose. But again, how effective this is depends on your vacuum specifically. But uh, yeah, I think this was a good um, way to prototype a cover. I definitely know it's not going to go to waste. All right, so to briefly talk about what I would change differently, aside from not using dollar store packing tape, is I'm not going to do this flap with a magnet locking mechanism. What I probably will do is I'll extend this top panel out by an extra half inch to an inch, and I'll have a, like a little tab sticking out from this front panel and on the side panel here and have like create a little opening here and kind of like treat it similar to how a mortise and tenon works where the mortise will be a hole on top of this top panel and then there will be a little tenon um, sticking out on this front panel and it'll just lock itself in place and just be held by friction and that should keep everything nice and sturdy and this piece here will be, will be holding this left side while there'll be a little mortise and tenon piece here holding everything on this side and that should keep everything very sturdy much sturdier than this there's like a bit of sagging here and some parts but um yeah i think that's how i will go about doing that for the plywood version and if you have any other recommendations of how i could do this better than a mortise and tenon kind of type of uh, configuration let me know in the comments down below uh, another thing i might change is i might make the back panels a little bit wider the tape's already coming off here um, just to like keep this as sealed as possible i would make this extend out by an extra quarter inch on both sides just so it's closed enough that i don't have to worry about any loss in suction power from the vacuum when it's when there's sawdust floating inside here as well as maybe just I don't want any lingering sawdust coming out because I'm going to use like piano hinges to hold everything together and I think that's about it what I might you actually use magnets for is when it's in the closed phase or when it's in the closed position so that so when this is closed the top panel might get a magnet and it'll be I guess attracted to something that's on this side or maybe I'll do like a hook with a bungee cord. I'm not exactly sure yet. But that's something I could deal with after that's built. But if you want to see when I build that, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, I'll probably make that. Uh, I might do another project first, but I'm not sure yet. But yeah, subscribe to see when I build that. If you are looking to make one out of plywood. Um, you can also follow me on Instagram. I'll be probably sharing some progress photos there when I start working on this. Um, yeah, subscribe, follow, and hope you enjoy the video and take care.